Uh, me and Ella, Ella and I, sorry, we've just spent the last about two hours uh, mooching around Tesco's because there was a few things that I'd spotted recently and I thought, well, we haven't done a Tesco's shopping video for a little while. And we did, we, we started actually with um, a quick trip to B&M because um, we, I was saying this earlier, we go through quite a lot of salt. So we got some of the coarse and the fine pink salt, pink obviously coarse for the, the grinder and uh, fine for the, uh, for the jars for the cooking. Um, to be fair, I don't see it anywhere else that sells it in, in that sort of volume. So let's do the usual stuff. Let's get the boring stuff out of the way, which is obviously all of the, 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 the veggies that we've, we've got. Now within this house, we do live slightly different lifestyles and the kids eat more of this than I do now. I certainly encourage anyone that's just starting out to use things like, you know, we've got a couple of different cabbages on here. We've got Savoy cabbage and we've got uh, the hard white cabbage. Um, to use these as, as the replacements for the starchy carbs. It's a, you know, you're not trying to cut the, the volume of food down to start with. You're just changing what you're eating. So, you know, the, one of the, the favorite recipes uh, to use the Savoy is the Savoy carbonara. So there you go. I mean, the cabbage is like, they're like a 50p or something like that. So that would feed easily three, three people, one cabbage, and then the rest of it is the, what you would normally make, you know, with um, ham or bacon, cream, those sorts of things. So, I mean, that's an ideal replacement. The kids have just, well, Ella's just decided, I'll stop calling the kids because they're not, the other adults in the house have just decided that they are going to have Crackslaw, which is effectively white cabbage, and they're gonna be using turkey mince. This is the, the lean turkey mince. Now, crack slaw, when you cook it, it's actually got quite, a, it can have quite a bit of fat in it anyway, so you can use oil in there. So you can easily get the, 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 the fat content higher. Um, so that's theirs, I and mean, we actually picked up a couple of um, trays of, this is the 2% turkey mince. Ella likes this for a lot of, what would you make? You make burgers out of this, don't you, or? Yeah, I mean, I'm not fussed with what type of turkey mince, it was just, because that one was in the reduced mm. section. You can also use this for sort of things like scotch eggs and that sort of stuff. Um, works perfectly well there. Uh, butter cabbage, yes. I mean, again, if you're looking at a replacement for your potatoes or your or your rice, whatever, buttered cabbage is is a is an absolute firm favourite in this house. Right. So I also thought I've got a cauliflower here. I'm going to sort of do a cauliflower bomb in the next few days. So where we're going to cover it in meat season meat. I'm not sure which one we're going to go for. We've got some, actually we've got minced beef, haven't we? Mm -hmm. so we could use that. It's a meal for three or four people. One whole cauliflower, again less than a pound. The protein, which is the minced beef. You can use whatever you want. I've got 10% minced beef uh, in there. So th there's the usual fresh veggies. I mean, you know, don't be afraid of things like sort of, you know, the, the long beans. There are a couple of grams of cows. I think they're three grams of cows per 100 grams. I would quite happily have a piece of protein, sort of like pan fried chicken or pan fried salmon, and then stick 100 grams of this alongside it. I mean, they're, they're perfect, it's ideal. And also just fry them. Don't boil them, just fry them. Um, along with the salmon when it's nearly cooked. Same for the asparagus. Again, they sit alongside any protein. Um, you know, again, two grams of carbs per 100 grams. You know, that's effectively almost the entire pack for two grams of carbs. Keto police, off you go. I'll give you a minute to get out of the room. You go, right. So, carrots. We have carrots in the house because Ella, Ella enjoys having carrots with some of your stir fries, don't you? Oh, well, I like it because it has a bit of colour, yeah. yeah. They're maybe seven, eight grams of carbs. That's, you know, okay, they're going to be slightly higher than all of these greens, but you don't eat them in the same volume. So actually adding a little bit of carrot, and I know that some people will go, oh, it's not keto. It's a, it's a clean, raw, you know, a fresh vegetable, which has you know, been demonized. I know, Matthew, I know, been demonized. The carrot's not the problem, yeah? I, I see I see comments in the groups about sort of buying, and we're gonna get onto them, buying sort of like the keto bars and the, and the snacks and the, and the shakes and all that sort of, I almost swore. Could, did we have a bleeper? No, uh, right, but... <laughs> okay. I won't, I won't. But, so we have a, people looking for snacks and then worrying about whether they're eating a carrot or not. I mean processed snacks, I mean the garbage stuff that's out there, and we'll get onto that. So, 
You look like you've got a halo at the moment. I do apologise for the YouTube lot. The camera's going absolutely nuts. Cool, I've got a halo for once. <laughs> Um, it's the carrot. It's the carrot saints. The saint, saint carrots are, are shining down on me. Whoever saint carrots. I'm desperately trying to get rid of it, but it's not going <laughs> away. <laughs> right. Anyway, carrots form part of Ella and Louis' lifestyle. Yeah, I might have something of that occasionally, but you know, you might have like 50 grams of carrot. Please don't stress about 50 grams of carrot. So, a couple of other things. So we've got the, um, you might find these quite difficult to, to get hold of at the moment in a lot of the supermarkets. So the, the shallots. Tesco's do tend to have them. They're not that expensive. I mean, I think they work out about 250 a kilo. Um, but we don't use a huge amount. We've got a couple of bags of them. Um, they're lower in carbs, you know, than onions. So onions, eight nines, shallots, threes. Ella wanted to get me to get some long peppers. Now these are going to be sweeter. You're going to have to. What's the? What's the these are going to be slightly higher in carbs. Six point four per okay. hundred. So they're, they're at the top end of a pepper. Um, the the green peppers, the lowest end, probably threes, yellow, red, um, going high. She wants me to. St oh, did did we get some? Have we got ricotta in the fridge? Yes, we've got. Right, okay, so we're going to stuff these peppers with ricotta. There's a recipe on the site. Um, here's some of the things that you might only find at. Tesco's or you know some of the bigger stores certainly so swoodles now I get these because Louis loves swede and they pretty, he'll pretty much eat them in anything but they're great replacement if you're going to try and do like a stir fry there you go you can use the swoodles they're about a pound a pack 250 grams they're going to be about what 10 grams of what's the I have to hand it to her now because I don't want to get my glasses 2.3 carbs per 100 apparently oh, when boiled according to instructions this is why they catch you out on the right. macros okay so but raw they're going to be closer to six yeah it doesn't give raw yeah. it okay. just says boiled so if you i mean you wouldn't eat the entire pack that's that's quite a lot of swoodles half the pack's probably going to give you about eight to ten grams of carbs but if that's a again if that's a swap from standard noodles you're looking at coming down from 50s and 60s down to 10. So again, Swede's a great uh, great um, veggie to use. Um, Louis, <laughs> Louis has it a lot as um, rice, um, or make a mash, or we like it roasted, don't we? Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, you won't find that anywhere else generally, as far as I know. But I've, we I've, wouldn't boil them either. We'd no, we wouldn't boil them, pan fry them. They don't take long to pan fry. You just work them in with whatever you're cooking. And likewise, something like this, you know, if you don't want to buy all of the, the different veggies, um, to make your own stir fry, then don't be afraid of these sorts of things because per 100 grams, it's only five grams of carbs, it's predominantly cabbage. Yeah, cabbage again. They, they you know, it, they, they use it because it's cheap, it bulks it out. Yes, it's got some bean sprouts in, it's got some red peppers, it's got shavings of carrots. You can have half the bag, this is a 320 size. Uh, gram bag so half of this bag would give you 10 grams no actually less than uh, would give you about seven grams eight grams of carbs that's it put that alongside a good portion of protein done then you know, you're under 10 grams for the day or for the meal should say so you know there's, there was even some lower ones if you've got ones with mushrooms in it kids don't like them so got that instead you keep calling us kids oh whatever um the other adults um so they don't like the mushroom one so get them but the mushroom one's going to be a little bit lower because they use more of that as a bulk something else that people um it might help people when they're just starting out is bags of cauliflower rice frozen so they're pre-portioned um let's see one bag which is 125 grams under three grams of carbs i would advise you don't microwave it because microwaving it makes them smell quite bad so um, I'd pan fry it. So just butter, oil, pan fry it. Add a little bit of um, you know garlic or whatever you want to it. Add some add some seasoning to it, and and there's your side to again any sort of protein or any sort of curry. Um, Helen's asking where are the swoodles found? Fresh veg, effectively. Wherever you find the stir fry mix, you'll find the you find the swoodles. That's uh, they're not always there. I, I, I do say this whenever I've done these these lives is that they're not always there. Um, whether it's just a seasonal thing or whether it's just a um, you know a, a, a demand thing. Okay, a couple of other things just before we move on to some more of the interesting bits. Um, obviously, mini avocados. 
Um, Ella loves to have one of these pan fried. Again, if you've never tried avocado pan fried, then do so. Um, these are ideal size. They're probably going to work out about 60 grams, 80 grams of avocado, aren't they? Those are 50 to 60. Oh, they're 50 to 60, okay. Uh, depending on how big the stone is, obviously. Mm. Um, but again, that'd be ideal. I mean, if they, essentially, you're looking at a gram of carbs at the very most, but obviously a great source of fat. So, you know, don't be afraid of um, pan frying that in a bit of butter, serving that with some scrambled eggs and whatever else you fancy. So they're, they're great. Um, now here's an interesting one. We've been um, toying up with the idea of, of uh, making something with these. So the Dabi beans. So these are fresh Dabi beans. Um, they are four or five grams of carbs. Five grams of carbs. They're a, they're a protein source. They're a plant-based protein source. Um, However, obviously, as with as with most plant-based protein sources, they come with carbs. They're, they eat five per hundred grams. Um, did you say you're going to make like a hummus out of this? Uh, falafel. falafel. I was going right. to work. Okay. I don't know how it's going so, to work. So we're going to have a little play with it. I mean, obviously, they can just go straight into a salad or something as a as, you know as you know part of the protein. Um, but yeah, we'll make something from them. They are already cooked. These are already cooked. So you can eat them cold, straight as, as they are. Obviously, they are unprocessed. So that's the difference between a lot of this stuff and maybe the soya protein pastas and those sorts of things. That These these are unprocessed, they are fresh products. Let's have a look at some of the protein sources that we've got. Oh, the only other thing that I've got here um, are these little baby um, pickles, baby cucumbers. Now, the interesting thing was that this, these, Can you show the label, please? sorry, these are the only clean, as in only ones without sugar in Tesco's. All of the others, all of the big ones, all of the sliced ones, and, and in, in every form that they come in, you know, sliced and, and lengthways, they all contain sugar. These don't. So obviously, things like belly pork, great protein source, great fat source. Um, this is for me, the, the other adults in the house. Uh, don't eat this really. They prefer, um, I suppose you, you like the chicken thighs, don't you? So, chicken thighs is about as fatty yeah. as I prefer um, the meaner meat. So I've got some chicken thighs. Me and Louie will eat the, the chicken thighs. I'll, I'll sort of cover these in a, in a blend um, and roast them. I, I like them so they are crispy skinned. Um, but yeah, so the belly pork is something that is essentially just for me. It's often quite difficult to find anything sliced, any meats that are sliced, prepared, that are clean. They've generally got um, dextrose, malted, no, not, not malted dextrin, dextrose, um, glucose, glucose syrup, syrup or, or even just sugar, straight out sugar. So you, you only have to, you don't have to look that far down the list either. It's usually sitting there on the, on the top line. Um, however, Tesco's have got a couple of options. So I've shown this one before, which is their Wiltshire, um, is it Wiltshire? Wiltshire cured ham. Cured ham. Um, this is clean. Um, was there any preservatives in this at all? I think so. Um, sodium nitrate. So it's got nitrates in it. No sugars at all. This is expensive. Sliced corned beef. Completely clean. There's nothing in this. Again, nitrates. That's just to sort of obviously pre preserve it. Um, but beef, salt, that's it. So I mean, you can buy tins and I would normally buy tins. But if you're looking at something sliced that you're trying to sort of make a, a sandwich from or, or you know a wrap or something, here's a, one of the, one of the um, like the sliced meat, it's the uh, like a, a like a serrano ham or a, a palmer ham. So this is a copper. So selected pork cut, slowly dry cured. Um, this was the only one. This was the only one that didn't have sugar in it. Um, there was a lot of other uh, sliced meats there, or cured meats, and it was, this was the only one that came away with, um, again, just nitrates, that's it. So it is possible to find um, reasonably clean sliced meats. Now, the other thing that we got asked for recently, or asked about, was nitrate-free. So nitrate-free bacon. Now this is the only one that I know about. There's probably sort of like uh, a few of the brands, but this is the one that's the only ones that's in supermarkets, naked brand. Now it's it. I mean, I've, I've tried this before. 
it is very expensive and it's it's okay don't expect don't expect great things um, it's just okay it's just nitrate free bacon um, but it's three pound fifty for a pack of six slices um, yes it's available if you want to go down the nitrate free range um, however understand that it's actually quite expensive I mean there's nothing else added to it um, pork water salt natural flavoring scorbic acid smoke flavoring that's it so, the uh, the corned beef and the cured meat those were in the mediterranean well it was in their deli section yeah so the, 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 those those sliced meats were in the deli section at tesco's but the wiltshire ham was with the other hams you, you'd have probably found it in the deli as well but yeah the the, the standard um I'm pointing to where the meats are, around the corner. Um, uh, the standard sliced meats, they've all got sugar in them. They've all got something in them that's rubbish. It was because we went through the deli section that I found um, the corned beef and the, uh, and the cured, the cured meat. So Ella was impressed with this. Nice big tin of tuna. So um, drain weight 280 grams, which is essentially around about two portions. That's about it. Um, or three if you're gonna make um, something like um, tuna meatballs. Tuna meatballs, that's the one. But again, great great source of protein. Um, get the one that's in water, spring water, uh, not in the processed oils. Um, there's loads of, we've got quite a few recipes with tuna, haven't we? Mm -hmm. But it's a great way of doing it if you're feeding a family of four, you know, a family, of, well, a family, get a couple of the tins of this um, rather than lots of little ones. So this is the sort of processed coconut oil, this has had this, the, the, the taste and the smell removed. So it's completely bland, um, no different to lard. Um, obviously it's much more expensive, it's, it's two, about 220 for one of these jars, which is a, is it a 500? Yeah, 500 mil. Um, whereas a pack of lard is about what, 40p and you get two packs in here. So, you know, there's a, there's a huge difference there. Um, however, I know Ella likes to cook in the unflavored uh, coconut oil, so I'll pick some up. This has been in short supply. I will, I, I have noticed that. So that's the first time I've seen it in, in Tesco's for a long time. I, and I normally would have got it from Morrison's in the bigger tub, and that's n just not been available anywhere. Nut butters, so we've got, this is one of, is this one of your favorites? I, oh, I think it, this it, is the Morrison's label, which is my favorite, okay. within a Tesco jar. Okay, so uh, on a, on a um, ranking list, where would this go? Is, it, is this in number one, two, three? Number two. This is number two, okay. So peanut butter from um, uh, Tesco's, it's 100%, there's nothing added to it. Um, so I took a photo because they do. There's there's, a, there's several hundred percent peanut butters. Yeah. Um, this one is slightly more expensive than their Tesco own brand. Um, but I think, as I said, this one. If you get the Morrison's one out the out the cupboard, put it next to it. They're the exact same jar with a different lid. So that the orange one, one there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So same jar. I think they're the same contents. And it's to do with the roasting. Yeah, so, the colour so, colour is exactly the same. Yeah, so the reason why I like the Morrison's one so much is that the, the roasting obviously affects the taste. It's got like a sweeter taste without adding anything to it. Right. So the Tesco own brand is a bit more musty, which you tend to get with 100% nut butters, whereas that one tastes a bit more like artificial nut butter without it being it. Right, okay. So, uh, we normally buy the nut butters from... Aldi. So we normally get these little pots. Now, um, Louis goes through a couple of these um, a week, easy. I think these are about, I think these are just under two quid. I think so, but th this is 260. So they look like they're about the same size. 170. Yeah, 170. Um, is it 170? Yeah, so they are about they are the same size. Um, I've seen obviously this brand. They they're clean. Um, Can you show the label? Sorry, yeah, show the label. Um, it looks a little bit watery to me. I haven't I haven't opened it up. I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing because the Aldi one can be ridiculously hard to well, mix this, in. Well, uh, this no, this is liquid. This is much softer. 
See, I'd prefer that because you can, you don't, like with the Audi stuff, you've got to be careful not to spill it out of the jar when you try and mix it. It's just more expensive. Even with the um, club card discount. I sort of get a bit, bit annoyed about this actually because this is one of the sweeteners. This is the cheapest version you can get down at, at Tesco's. So it's a Candorel uh, erythritol stevia blend. This one's been around for a couple of years now, hasn't it? The, 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 usual, so. the usual one that we see around is the Pure Via and the Natvia and those sorts of things. So this one came along and, and actually for a little while they got into a bit of competition price-wise and now they're not. It annoys me because we, we're, able to, we're able to get hold of the one kilo bags in very, very small quantities and able to put it on our website at the same price per kilo as Tesco's can provide the product. Surely Tesco's and Morrison's can actually do better when it comes to things like this. They're massively overcharging for these sorts of things. Um, you know, we buy like 50 kilos at a time, they probably buy 50 tons at a time. This one is no different, I say, to Natvia, Purevia, what's the other one? Natvia, Purevia. Truvia. Truvia, well, okay. Natvia, Purevia, Truvia, all stevia and erythritol. That's stevia, sucralose and erythritol. Right, okay. But they're all the, 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 the granulated sweetener. With a, with a very similar balance. That, that you, you'll see them anything between um, 15 pounds a kilo, if you're lucky, um, upwards to 21 pounds a kilo. That, that's the, the sweetness. Just be careful when you're buying it. Um, make sure you don't buy, the, don't buy the, the crappy ones that are a pound at Lidl's or Aldi's. They're, they're not the same, not the same at all. Um, obviously, we have to buy some cheese. Um, it took us a little while to hunt out the number four. All we could find was threes. Can you hear Coco in the background? She knows I've got cheese. Um, so yeah, uh, four strands, I mean, it's just cheese, isn't it? But um, we, we've got to have the number four cheese. I bought myself some nice little blue cheese as well. Um, just something for Seven me. Up. Just something for me. Some, some of the interest, before we start losing everybody. Oh, let's do the milk really quickly. So why did you get this? Because people often ask, um, because almond milk doesn't just, exactly just work, so I can see the work the best in like teas and coffees. Um, lots of people like to use the Arla lacto free because it's half the carbs right, of normal okay. milk. So a lot of people do ask about sort of like not using milk and using milk alternatives. Don't like using almond milk or um, well coconut milk in tea because it doesn't actually work that well. Um, so a lot of people go down the lines of lacto free. So this has got you say half the carbs. So this has. Two point something per hundred mil. The other options, um, we spotted this plenish um, today. So the almond milk that the own branded almond milk from Tesco's is clean, as in it doesn't contain any maltodextrin. The Aldi versions, the little versions, and I think the Sainsbury's versions all do. Uh, Morrison's are the same as Tesco's. They're essentially the same ingredients. They contain. Um, just the gums to actually sort of stop it from separating. Um, however, more expensive, absolutely. However, if you look at the ingredients, it's completely, well, not completely different because it's almonds and water, but it's a, it's the actual content of almond is at least double, if not more. Is this 2% almond? I don't know. The plenish is five. Yeah, no, no, I'm sure that's 2%. Yeah. Yeah. So 2% of what's in there is the actual almond, whereas this is 5. But it also doesn't contain any of the, the gums or stabilizers. So what it will mean is you need to do that. It's also certified carbon negative, apparently. Okay. It's twice the price though. So, it's your choice. Neither of them contain any of the, the, the sweetener nasties. This one contains the gums, this one doesn't. In tally to you as to which one you choose. Butter is butter, soft cream cheese, just be careful. Some of them do contain um, uh, starches, so this is clean. It should, just, it should just say milk. Well, the first good sign is I can't find the ingredient. It says, yeah, yeah, made using milk. Milk, that's it. Same for things like the mascarpone. So I like making like a mascarpone mousse every now and then, so that's a, that's a great thing for me as a dessert. Um, Ella's picked this up today. Um, I just was interested. She's interested in having like. a look at sort of like a, a smooth cheese. Is there anything else in this though? It's got uh, stabilizers in it. No, a thickener. 
Right. So it's cheddar cheese, water, skim milk powder, butter, emulsifying salt, thickener, preservative. Right, okay. So obviously if you want a clean cream cheese, then you go for the soft cheese. Right, a couple of, a couple of things that we're, going to, we're interested to try. Um, well, interested, I mean chocolate. Who's not interested in chocolate? 85% intense dark chocolate. Um, we'll see. We don't know. If they, if this is their cheaper end. This is the one pound bar of chocolate. So um, don't expect great things from it, but if you're using it in, I'm gonna shut the door because Coco is having a bit of a paddy. Um, however, this one Ella spotted and this one looks really interesting. So this is lime and salt? Yeah, it's 70%, so it's okay. not what we'd normally go for. So as a very rare occasion, I might have a little taste, but I know Lou will love this. Oh, sorry, I missed the clean, one of the cleans sausages so this is like a salami this is this is what I had a little piece of earlier it's quite fatty Hang on. so if you can see it at the end bit there yeah. so and you yeah yeah you can see the chunks of fat um, but it's completely clean most of these normally contain dextrose or something in it it's part of the, 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 the process of making it couple of things that I wouldn't and the price just horrified me at these there's there's a chili one as well somewhere but these so um, crushed gar garlic crushed ginger and there's a crushed uh, chili somewhere kicking around um, they're only I think there's 70 grams each in here um, per kilo it's just extortionate it's, it's it, eye-watering um, however they're clean so if you don't use much in the way of fresh stuff and you don't want to be sort of bashing ginger or garlic into a paste, then those are going to be okay. Low salt or a sodium reduced salt, which again, part of the electrolytes. So I use that along with pink Himalayan salt within my electrolytes. Um, oh, there's one thing that I forgot to mention earlier. Lots of people talk about sort of making stocks and gravies. Well, Tesco sell one that's clean. So this is 99% chicken stock and then a little bit of um, obviously the veggies that go in. So it's, uh, we've used this previously. Um, it's ideal. I mean, it's a couple of quid a pound. You always freeze it down, use a little bit, put it, in, put it into a little ice cube tray, something like that. Now you picked this up, didn't you? Hickory smoked nuts. At first I was interested because I never see macadamia in these collections, then but it was in there. Um, they're quite high in carbs, aren't they? Because it's cashews as well. Because it's cashews as well, So yeah. it's balanced out with macadamia and cashew, because macadamia is right. one of the lowest. Well, that doesn't taste very well, does it? No. But Blimey. the other thing that interests me is that they, there's no oil or starch. Yeah. It's just salt. So one of my favourite snacks when we go to the cinema are the... Um, Starbucks, they do their, well they did, I've not had any for ages. Oh wow. And the Starbucks one aren't, aren't clean. No, but smell them, it's, they're good. I'm gonna try some. Oh, I think I'm gonna... Wow. Oh, the flavor is good. However, they are higher than a lot of the sort of like snacks. I mean, we're looking at per 30 grams, four grams of carbs. So just be careful. If you're gonna have some, portion them out. Here's another one of my bugbears. Again, talking about the price of um, sweeteners. This is milled linseed. They're charging £10 a kilo for it. Um, you can buy it um, unmilled and just pop it into a, uh, if you've got a Nutribullet, do that. Um, we have it on our website at 7 50 a kilo. Why can't Tesco's do that? And again, we buy it in we buy much it, we, smaller batches we, compared we, to them. Yeah, we buy it in again, just you know, a couple of sacks at a time. £10 a kilo for milled linseed, it's ridiculous. Here's something that Ella will use on her carb up days. So tins of chickpeas, uh, what are you gonna do with these? Gonna... Um, I don't know yet, I might make some hummus, I might just chuck it into a ratatouille. Don't know. There you go. So again, if you're doing a little bit of carb cycling over a weekend, this is the sort of stuff that, oh, well, anytime don't be over a weekend. We're gonna do some carb cycling. This is the sort of stuff that you can introduce um, to help you rather than thinking about because um, you've got squash as well haven't you? Yeah I've got a butternut squash. Yeah so butternut squash, chickpeas, those sorts of things. It, it'll prevent you from sort of struggling to get back um, to a lower carb you know she may go to 50 or 60 grams of carbs in a day. 
Right, okay. So there was a there was a um, a comment in the group earlier about the Slim Fast. Was it Slim Fast bars? Oh yeah, grenade was ice cream. Yeah, grenade was ice cream. It's the Slim Fast bars and they have the word keto on them. Let's be very clear. They're not. They're not even close. They're 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 garbage. They're 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 full of sugar. They're just rotten. Rotten. So the best advice is don't. They're just waste you're just wasting your money. Um so then we went looking for other alternatives in the supermarkets and we found this one which is obviously promoting that it's a fibre one and it's protein. So it's telling us two things that it's high in fibre and it's a protein bar. Right? Or protein snack. Oh, I've got my glasses. Do you, do you wanna do you wanna give me the so ingredients, so first of all, inulin or chicory root extract, which we are playing around with ourselves, um, but the fact that it's the first ingredient sets off a few alarm bells. Yeah, inulin's a very... <laughs> high fibre. Yeah, You're high not meant to have more than 10 grams a day. And, and you'll know if you have. Um, then soy protein isolate, milk proteins, hydrolyzed collagen peptides, uh, glycerol, vegetable fats, which are palm and shea, Maltitol, sucralose, fat reduced cocoa powder, water, tapioca starch, flavorings, rice starch, salt, emulsifiers, acid, sunflower oil. So the, the red flags there, obviously, the maltitol, um, the vegetable the, fats, the, vegetable the, soy. Fats, the soy, the flowers, the tapioca starch. Um, they've failed to mention all of that on the front. They've just put on the back, on the front, protein and fiber. Um, 10 grams of protein and only one gram of sugar. That's per bar, yeah? So how mm -hmm. big's the bar? Uh, 24 grams. And Apparently there's three in that pack. There's, yeah, there's three little bars in here. So where's the protein coming from? Soy protein ice Oh, it's protein, right, okay. Oh, my life. These things are diddy. Right, if anyone... It just gets more if depressing. Anyone, if anyone knows what a Milky Way looked like, oh my God. Right. 10 grams of protein and one gram of sugar. Oh my god, that's horrific! All of the all of that garbage that's inside it that isn't doing anything for you. First of all, who's going to stop at one? Yeah, I know. Second of all, the waste of packaging. That's what you get in the box. <laughs> you could double it, triple it. So then we also saw this one, which has got a keto label on it. Um, now, ingredients-wise, this one's fine, isn't it? Apart from the peanuts, but it does advertise that it's, it's a, it's a peanuts, chocolate and peanuts. Yeah, it's a, so yeah. we did go looking for other flavours. But there was nothing else there. That This was the only one that was there. Now, cost-wise, I think those, that was about a pound, wasn't it? It, was, oh, it wasn't much. Probably. It was, it was just over a quid for those three. So the difference is, this is this was, I think, closer to two quid for this, this one small bar. Um, I mean, the other thing is that one small bar is higher calorie than the three yeah, of those five of ones put yeah. together. It's probably going to be a bit more substantial. So it, it is a, um, you can... You're, it's peanuts, the first ingredient, yeah. so you probably won't like actually, it. Actually, it doesn't smell of peanuts. It's peanut with chocolate chip. But the, yeah, the ingredients other than peanut, if you don't want to have peanuts, is clean. It's got a bit yeah. of MCT in it, it's got a mix of proteins, it's still... Um, plant-based proteins, but they use pea. Oh no, I can taste the peanuts now properly. I don't know how you didn't taste the peanut bars to start with. Beware, it's sweet and bizarre at all. Not that you want to give your dog this anyway, but don't. No, on a second bite, that's not very nice. No, it's got quite a... Yeah. Like, almost like a bubblegum the, taste. The first one was okay, but oh, no. It's got the xylitol taste. Yeah. Oh, and also, uh, along with my cabbages, I did buy some more yogurt as well. Uh, we didn't need it necessarily, but this it, it's just a very basic Greek-style yogurt. Right, that's it. I think we're done. Thank you very much.